Welcome everybody, my name is Martin Callinan from Source Code Control. So we are sponsors of the Grey Matter ISV Partner Day. As a company, we work with organizations to help them manage open source software when used in software development. So things like IP and licensing issues, but also security vulnerability management. Now this session is rather topical. It's um, about companies looking to move on-premise legacy applications to the cloud, which we refer to as application modernization and the role of open source in that cloud migration journey and what needs to be managed, should be managed and how you manage it. So organizations will be on a maturity curve as regards this migration of uh, applications to platform as a service. So you might have existing applications, very old monolithic architecture applications, which are still critical to the business. And uh, you may make the decision to, as much as possible, just lift and shift those on-premise applications to platform as a service. So without doing any any particular re-architecting, just making tweaks to the code for security and things like database dependencies, through to you may decide to re-architect uh, an application or even completely rebuild from scratch into a cloud native application. Whatever the scenario, there will be uh, open source components and libraries used by software developers. If you if you look at the um, composition of, of software code, so this is a report from Forrester from a couple of years ago, legacy applications, so old COBOL, C, C++ code bases will be predominantly proprietary code written from scratch by an organization. Uh, and we'll have a, a low percentage of open source software license components. Compare that to modern applications, which almost the exact opposite, where there'll be a high percentage of third party open source and a very low percentage of proprietary code. So this is um, applications written in languages like Java, Ruby, Go, etc. So with that modern software development cycle is generally referred to as a software supply chain. So developers will pull in code from sites like GitHub, NuGet, Node, Maven, etc. Those, those components and libraries will have their own dependencies, which are probably more open source. And then that will be combined and merged with existing legacy code, other third party code, maybe outsourced code, maybe code off other projects within an organization and merged into a delivered code base, which might be packaged into like containers, which pulls uh, in even more dependencies, which will be open source. So the delivered code base that's going to be moved to platform as a service will have a lot of third party open source components. So why is that an issue? And what, why, what exactly needs to be managed? Let's have a look at one component. So a simple component, so this is a component called Beyond Topic, which is hosted on NuGet, a popular site for, uh, for finding third party packages related to .NET. So all these components have a number of attributes. The first attribute is there will be a license and there's documented over 2000 open source licenses that we're aware of. So in this case, the license is the AGPL, which I'll come back to. It's significant if you are moving to a, a kind of cloud architecture. Uh, so open source licenses typically have a number of obligations which are triggered based on the use case. So typical obligations will include uh, the need for copyright attribution, and in some cases, which is relevant to the AGPO license, it may trigger the need to disclose the source code to users of the whole application. Now, if an organization has IP value in the actual software, obviously sharing the code will not be particularly uh, desirable. So you've got a license and then you've got a version number. You will find multiple versions 
of these third party components. Those can be used as an indicator of uh, how well coded, how much activity there is on a component, but also can be cross referenced to sites like the National Vulnerability Database to identify if there's any known vulnerabilities associated with that particular version of a component. Then we have dependencies. So uh, Beyond Topic has a dependency on system.text.json. So when the uh, build is run for this code base, uh, that component will get pulled into the build. And you can see uh, it will pull in another license, the MIT license, which has different obligations to the AGPL, which you need to be mindful of. And system.text.json itself properly will have dependencies which are referred to as transitive dependencies. So just that one component is pulled in even more open source components. And then the usage of the components in the application has a bearing on the triggers for the obligations of the code. So whether it's internal, distributed, or a cloud application can have a bearing on the obligations required by the licenses. So Beyond Topic was licensed under a license called the AGPL, the Afero GPL. This is referred to as a uh, copyleft license and generally is viewed as restrictive to commercial organizations. So the trigger and the obligation that makes it a risk to organizations is this need to disclose the source code or share the source code of the code base behind an application. So in the license, it states, um, if anybody interacting remotely through a computer network, so that will be software as a service or client server, um, then they should be able to get the corresponding source code of the application. You could be using just one component license on the AGPL, and it will trigger the need to disclose the source code of the whole code base. So that's led uh, a number of organizations like Google, for instance, they have a blanket ban on the use of AGPL by their developers. So if you go to this URL, it's actually the policy uh, which they've made public that their, their developers work to when using open source in their software development. So they've got a complete ban on the use of AGPL. It's just very difficult for them to comply with it in all situations. Sometimes it may be okay for them to share the source code, uh, but it's very difficult to control that across all their varying cloud services. So you have to be mindful of the, the license of the components used in software development. And the reality is there is an increase in the use of open source by bigger companies. And so there's an increase in legal cases related to um, mismanagement of the obligations. So an example I'll give you is a, an organization called Artifacts who are the copyright holders of GoScript, which is a widely used um, component, uh, so PDF management tool. And they have this dual license where they've put GoScript under, again, under the AGPL license. We just talked about the obligations of that. If you want to use GoScript and not disclose your source code, then you can buy a commercial license from them, which takes away the obligations of the AGPL. Now, they've been targeting companies who are using GoScript and neither sharing their code nor buying a commercial license. The most recent case, which the quote on the screen is, is related to, is against Siemens. And there's an interesting backstory to this case. Um, the, the, the way that Artifacts found out that Siemens used GoScript in one of their products is a customer of the Siemens product had an issue which referenced GoScript. So rather than raise a support call on Siemens, they raised a support call on Art Artifacts. So they got visibility that Siemens used GoScripts in their products and hadn't bought a commercial license and were, were not sharing their source code, which triggered the uh, legal case. Um, and you can see the quote there from the president of Artifacts, straightforward choice, comply with the AGPL, which is disclose the source code 
or sign a commercial license. So it, it is important for companies to be mindful of open source licenses in their code. The other significance <clears throat> around this cloud journey is you may consider using databases like MongoDB or Redis Labs, which are databases which have been designed for uh, cloud, app cloud applications. Uh, that MongoDB have been very aggressive in their licensing. So they've got a similar dual licensing strategy by a commercial license or it's under an open source license. They've actually modified the AGPL license to make it even more restrictive. And the trigger is that um, you may have to disclose the, whole, the source code of the whole solution stack behind an application if you use the open source uh, license version. And what they're trying to do is drive people to buy a commercial commercial license. But if you're if you're in this cloud migration journey and managing costs, you may consider using the free open source version. Be mindful of that obligation, which could could come back to bite you uh, sometime in the future. And then there's security. So we talked about the version number of components, being able to cross-reference that to any known vulnerabilities. The reality is there's more and more open source code available, which is great. It speeds up uh, software developments. But following behind that is there's an increase in uh, security vulnerabilities. Now, the good thing about open source is generally security vulnerabilities are fixed straight away by the community around a lot of these open source packages. But if you're not tracking them in your code, then they're not going to get updated. So some stats from uh, recent uh, recent reports, um, a 430% growth in next generation cyber attacks, targeting open source projects, uh, open source breaches increased 55% year on year, 11% of open source components using applications of known vulnerabilities. But the reality is that a lot of companies are not integrating security tracking of open source components into their software development lifecycle. So uh, recent surveys, only 14% of organizations integrate security into their software development lifecycle. So how, how does this play out in reality? So most people listening to this uh, session will be aware that British Airways had one of the biggest GDPR fines ever. So they leaked a load of customer data. What was behind that, uh, that breach was hackers exploited a vulnerability in a, a, a broadly used third party open source component called Modernizer. And, and it's literally just 22 lines of code. Now the version that was in the British Airways uh, customer portal hadn't been updated since 2012. So the reality is there was, an up, there was multiple updates to modernizer addressing that vulnerability, but hackers or bad actors were able to exploit the out-of-date version of modernizer, which led to 183 million pound GDPR fine for British Airways. So again, from a security perspective, it's imperative that third party open source components attract. Now, because of the increase in uh, exploits of third party open source vulnerabilities. There's an increase in regulation across certain industry sectors, which specifically call out the need to identify vulnerable open source components in code bases, keep inventory of open source components. So for instance, the PCI Standards Council have a secure software lifecycle standard, which explicitly calls out the need to inventory for open source components if they're vulnerable and have a strategy for remediating. There's similar things coming out of NIST, FDA, MITRE, and the European Union as well. And typically there's this, this need to maintain a software bill of materials, which I'll talk about uh, a bit later in this, in this session. But the challenge for most companies and particularly with the COVID situation at the moment and this pressure to move on-premise um, applications to platform as a service is developers are under pressure to deliver to deadlines, 
so any any anything outside of coding is a distraction so security tends to get put on a back burner and definitely licensing gets put on a back burner and similarly the business dilemma is they've got a pressure to move applications to platform as a service so that is, that is one of the pressures so fortunately there is guidance and best practice of how to manage this situation so being related to code and software developments no doubt companies will look for a technology solution and there are tools uh, referred to as software composition analysis tools which can scan and integrate into build environments and identify where developers have used third-party components how they're licensed their version numbers dependencies related to those components and also if they're vulnerable so you've got tools like white source software flexnet code insight fossa sonotype so on and so on and so on but data alone is is not the solution it's a, it's a combination of people technology and processes now from a process perspective um, which is taking software composition analysis tools and working it into a process for your software supply chain there is a project called open chain which was initially uh, started by the Linux Foundation it's supported by companies of all sizes we're a, we're a, a partner organization of open chain but you've got companies like Microsoft Google Facebook uber uh, all contributing to the open source open chain definition now open chain is going to be formally announced as an ISO standard next month so basically what it is is the definition of the um, processes that you would need to adopt to demonstrate that you are managing open source in your software supply chain so things like have you got a policy or a guide for developers about what open source is acceptable to use in a particular application so if you don't want to share source code um, have you articulated that licenses like the AGPL are not allowed in a code base how do you track for version numbers of components how do you identify components open source components in your code base and when you ship your code are you meeting the obligations of those licenses so it's about building trust in the uh, software supply chain so I mentioned Microsoft uh, one of the organizations that are, that are actually a platinum member of open chain and and did a lot of the work to move it from just a project into being an ISO standard and indeed Microsoft themselves announced themselves as being conformant to open chain and they take it very seriously Microsoft have shifted in recent years as no doubt everybody on this session would be aware uh, they're using more and more open source software in their software development so you can see this quote from David Rodin who's their general counsel Microsoft uses over 150,000 open source components per month in their software developments and they take their obligations to manage things like licensing very seriously so that's why they they are supportive of open chain so it's quite natural for their uh, ISV community to be following suit so how can this work in a practical kind of DevOps uh, world of software developments so the tools that I mentioned the software composition analysis tools most of them you can integrate into tools that developers use to build software so all stages of development if you define what is acceptable to be used or not acceptable to be used by developers so any license that triggers an obligation to share code you can um, you can stop developers using or guide them not to use you can integrate those tools into the build environment so if a, if a developer was to pull in a component say license under the AGPL or a component with a vulnerability you can get a, a an alert or you can even block a build uh, if that situation happens so all the way through the development lifecycle 
you can manage that open source software supply chain. So, so you probably come across the term shift left. That's what shift left refers to, but you can manage it all the way through to the release. And when you do a release, you can have what's referred to as a software bill of materials, which is basically an inventory of all the open source components used in your in your environment, in your code base. So where and when to scan. So as I said, all the way through the development lifecycle, you can integrate software competition analysis tools. So if you're using artifact repositories, you can integrate with those and identify all the components, how they're licensed, version numbers if they're vulnerable. You can integrate with ID environments like Visual Studio, build environments. You can integrate with things like Azure DevOps, Jenkins, etc. You can scan containers and identify what's being pulled into containers. So it is very possible to automate a lot of the management of uh, security and licensing of open source components. And what we advocate is for every release of software that's going to be used by users, you can create what's called a software bill of materials, which is basically an inventory of all the third party open source. So in this example, there's 52 third party open source components, 13 with restrictive licenses, which may or may not be acceptable. And there's 155 known security vulnerabilities. Now with security vulnerabilities, just because there is a known vulnerability it doesn't mean to say it's exploitable. So you can do pen testing to see if they are exploitable. Some tools can actually tell you whether your application is using the vulnerable code, which helps with that remediation process. But the software bill of materials is a useful data point uh, when releasing software. And the benefits of integrating in your software development pipeline has cost benefits. So the further down the release cycle you go to identify issues, whether it's a licensing issue or a security vulnerability issue, if you've released software, it's, it's significantly more expensive to remediate. You've got to get a fix out to users of the software. So the benefits of fixing early, identifying and fixing early in that, you know, that shift left kind of world is uh, obviously will save the organization money. So where can you learn more? We have a training course called Get It Right with Open Source Software, which goes through um, all the different licenses, how to manage an open source software supply chain, how to leverage open chain. So if you want to consider training, please visit our training website. If you want to know how you currently stack up against Open Chain, we've created an online tool which you can just go through the questions and rate yourself against Open Chain. Um, what we are offering to attendees of the ISV Partner Day is uh, what we refer to as a smoke test. So, if you want to have an idea of what third party open source components are in your code base or a test code base, if you like, um, we can do a, a high level report identifying the open source components, the version numbers, the licenses associated with them, and if they're vulnerable. Or if you just want to know more in general and have a confidential discussion, just mail open at source code control or uh, my email address at the beginning of the presentation and we can um, have a discussion and guide you further. Thank you for your time and I hope you enjoyed the session.